Hey everyone, Taylor Stein here with another Fusion 360 tip. Today I want to share with you guys how I like to combine sketching and sculpting within Fusion 360. Now you might be thinking that these two don't really go together, but it's actually one of the most powerful things you can do within Fusion 360. We'll be using this towel hook as an example to show you how you can perform a traditional sweep inside the sculpting environment. The two things that you need for any sweep are a path and a profile. As you can see, I've already sketched out a path, so all that's left is to create a profile at some point along this curve. Now what I really want to do is draw my 2D profile at this endpoint of the curve. To do this, I can create a construction plane using the Plane Along Path tool. Under the Construct menu, I'll choose Plane Along Path, and I'll select my curve. You'll see that I can create a construction plane at any point along my curve. If I want to snap this plane to one of the endpoints, I can enter in 0 or 1. Next, I'll create a sketch and place it on our recently created work plane. I need to make sure I include some of this 3D geometry from my initial sketch on my current sketch. To do this, I'll navigate to the Sketch drop-down menu, and under Project Include, I'll select Include 3D Geometry. I'll select the endpoint from my initial curve, and now when I hide that path, you'll see that that endpoint still exists on my current sketch. Using the Look At tool, I'll click on my construction plane, and now I can draw out my 2D profile. Under Sketch, I'll choose a center rectangle, and create a rectangle that's roughly this big. Now I want to round off all of these corners a bit, so I'll use the Sketch Fillet tool. Under Sketch, we'll choose Fillet, and I'll select two edges. I can now enter in whatever size fillet I want, how about one millimeter. I'll repeat this for all four corners. With all my corners rounded off, I'll stop my sketch and turn on the visibility of my path. You'll see that now I have my 2D profile positioned precisely at the end of this curve. This same workflow can be used if you need to position a work plane anywhere along a curve, and this comes really in handy when you're doing other things such as lofts. Next, I'll enter the Sculpt environment by selecting Create Form, and under Create, I'll select Sweep. I'll select my profile and my path, and you'll see it sweeps this 2D profile along the path. I can change the number of faces going down my curve by adjusting this from 8 to how about 16 to give me some finer control going down that curve. I'll select OK, and you'll see that now, this is a T-spline body that I can manipulate just like any other body that I'm used to. I can select this entire edge loop and choose Edit Form to do some freeform manipulations. I can hold the Alt key to even add some additional geometry to my form. By doing this, I can use a sketch-based command to do probably 90% of the work, and I can add in all the final details that I really need by hand. I can enable soft modification to make sure that my changes to one area of the body smoothly propagate throughout. You'll see that if I increase the width over here, I have some smooth changes occurring throughout my body. Next, to make sure that I create a solid body, I need to close off both of these open ends of my T-spline body. To do that, under Modify, I'll choose Fill Hole, and click on one of these open edges. You'll see that it seals off my T-spline body at that point, and I'll do this to both sides. To finish sculpting, all I have to do is click Finish Form, and a solid body is created. If I want to make some changes to my sculpted body, all I have to do is right-click on the Form feature in the timeline, and select Edit. I can make some changes to my sculpted body, and when I hit Finish Form, I return to the solid modeling environment with my solid body. So that sums up my quick tip today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you want to reach out to me directly, you can tweet me at Taylor underscore Stein. Thanks for watching.